there is one shadow I've been chasing. The same one that you seek. You may know him as the Jackal. Where he hides is not known. But his power can be seen throughout the land. So, my first question, obviously, last time we spoke, you said this is going to be a PC only. Yeah, of course. Yeah, PC it was dedicated. The last time it was at Lipsy, wasn't it? Yeah. So, uh, so what has changed, and, and uh, will there still be focus on the PC game? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. When when we were at Lipsig, I mean, the, the response to your question is Ubisoft doesn't make game engines just to make a game, right? They make a game engine to make lots of games, and there was a dedicated team uh, whose job it was was to get our engine running on console. And so we, we wrapped up that technology team into our core team, and we put all of the three productions in, in sync. So all of, the, all of the versions are the same. It's not like there's a console version that has different levels or anything. It's all the same world. It's just optimized differently for the different platforms. I think I think the PC gamers need to be comfortable in knowing that that those consoles are really, really, really powerful. And what's important to say is like we're using the consoles in the way they're meant to be used. And by you know the way we made the PC game in order to support this giant open streaming world with no loading is actually what needs to be done to make such a thing happen on a console. Alright, so, so can you tell us a little bit what you're showing off here today? Uh, well, we're showing a, another completely new demo. The demo you saw at Lipsig was, you know, six kilometers away from the from what we're doing here today. Um, now we're showing jungle. We're showing a big lake. We're showing river systems in boats. Um, we're showing a, a raid on a pipeline. We're showing more information about the buddies, uh, working with the, the buddy characters to sort of take alternate optional versions of missions. Uh, buddy rescues. If you if you go down in battle, you got Warren there to back you up. Uh, really, just trying to build upon, you know, what we started at. Lipsig. Uh, uh, almost a year ago now and uh, and really show that the whole game is now coming to that level of quality at Lipsig we had you know one kilometer of 50 square kilometers that was sort of at that high level of quality and now we've surpassed that level of quality and and now it's everywhere in the game world and and you're really starting to get a sense of the scale and, and the feel of it which is great something that I, I noticed in the demo was uh, the, the tactical element of using fire in your combat. Can you tell us something about that and how you can use it in the game? Well, fire fire is a really important element in play. I mean, obviously, if, if you can get a fire uh, in play and you can sort of keep the enemy pinned down while that fire is creeping towards them, they, they run out of options real fast. Uh, but the same thing can happen to you. I mean, getting it's kind of like getting trapped between a between a rock and a hot place or something, I don't know. But uh, having a fire creeping up behind you when you're when you're in the middle of a gun battle, it's really, really problematic. And it adds this really crazy dynamic element to the fight. Obviously, with lots of explosive stuff kicking around, it, it adds ex extra layers of, of excitement and chaos. Uh, it also showcases how dynamic and sort of organic the world is. You know, when the, the trees and the grass and everything are burning, it's it just it just creates this real feeling of, of I've really been here. <laughs> you know, I've been here very, very effectively, which is cool. Uh, I also noticed that the map you have, you've chosen to play it in in the game actually, and uh, you're never taken away from that that experience. Yeah. Can you tell us about that choice? Well, we really want to keep the player in the game world as much as possible. If the player is pausing the game in order to look at a menu and figure out where he is or something like that, that's not that's not ideal for us. We want the player to be immersed in this world. We want him to feel the the dirt under his fingernails and the gun oil and the and the sticky blood. Like, and if he's popping in and out of a menu every every 60 seconds, uh, it really shatters that. I mean, we don't we don't take the camera control away from the player ever. Not when we're giving him a mission briefing. There's no cutscenes. When he's driving a vehicle, we don't give him a third-person view. We work really hard on our camera system to make sure you have the situational awareness you need driving a vehicle. Um, we really want the player in the game all the time, and and you know, especially in an open-world game where you need a map. If that means you're going to be popping into a menu, that breaks it. So we had to put it in game. If you want to hunt this merchant of death, you must descend into his world. You must become that which you hunt. All right, so we need to end now. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much for coming. See okay. you at Lipstick again. Definitely. Okay, bye. bye.